what you get. Nails and more nails. The long range plans of like, what is the cumulative effect of all this? I don't think anyone's really sat down and put the pencil to it. It's a little hodgepodge of something here. They permit this activity, they permit the next activity here. And then the cumulative effect is no one's ever added all these things up. This actually is just see what the ultimate effect is. And I think someone needs to do some studying on this. Who? I don't know. That's the thing. There's no one really in charge. Forty years ago, conservation was reactive. The environment was treated as a given and damaged without thought. And conservationists only had the option to fix up what they could to what the generation before had thought would last forever. That was then. Now we are proactive. We plan things out rather than simply react. We have the advantage of knowing that we stand before the future. When the program was first established, the EPA had a much heavier hand in how we would come together to write our comprehensive plans. It didn't give local communities a lot of organic ability to craft a plan that met their needs. It was really hard to engage partners because it really was seen as an EPA plan and not a community plan. I think that has evolved over time, and what we have today is very much driven by the community and not driven by some construct of the EPA. And yet we've done a good job of skating between the two so that we can capture what the community cares about most, but present it in the plan in a way that is understandable to the EPA. The biggest change in the program has been our ability to bring diverse constituencies to the table. It's really exciting when you're sitting at a meeting and you see the Port Authority and a Chamber of Commerce and an elected official and an environmental group and several engineering firms and citizens groups all coming together and really vetting what is most important to protect. In my experience in this country, I don't think there is a system that is experiencing both the diversity and the intensity of resource demand that this bay estuarine ecosystem is. Maintaining the natural resources of coastal Alabama while balancing the needs of economic growth and human use requires foresight. To do this, the management conference produces watershed management plans to build a more resilient future. I would say it's dramatically better than the early days. The NEP in the early days was really tumultuous. We had a lot of different parties, NGOs, business organizations pushing and pulling the direction that it was going to go in. And it was very hard to build consensus on what we would do and what we wanted to do. There's been a much clearer sense of where they need to go and what they need to work on. And really, they've been extraordinarily good about pulling together diverse interests and getting them working on the same questions. Just look at all the watershed management plans that are now out there. Since 2009, the management conference has created and implemented 15 watershed management plans covering 31 watersheds, with five more plans in development this year. Of course, that's not all the planning that the management conference has been doing to prepare for the future. I had a good friend who fished with me and hunted with me when we were growing up, just like two boys, I guess. But um, I grew up fishing and fishing in those little freshwater swamp places and lakes, the dead lakes up there. If the problem isn't a crisis, very few people see it as a problem. I've lived in Mobile all my life, and I had the impression of the Delta being seen from the highways and the bridges, etc. It's massive, it's expansive, and you don't usually see much of anything other than the natural. But you go up into the Delta and you putz around in a small boat or something, and it becomes a little overwhelming the types of activities that are going on and have been going on over time and that cumulatively, little by little, are eating into the Delta. It is not a vast, pristine, undisturbed environment. 
fact, it just seems that we are nickel and diming the, the resource to death and small parceling this out of existence and small parceling that out of existence without any foresight as to the, the cumulative consequences of what we're doing. Could this growth have an impact on Delta wetlands? Uh, I don't really know much about that. <laughs> I really don't know. I don't have many thoughts on that subject. I don't know that much about the, all that stuff. The government now controls that, and I, I hope they do. But, yeah, I, you gotta, so I guess you'd have to see what you want more in the uh, economy or the environment. Public involvement is crucial to our work. The Management Conference supports volunteer water quality monitoring. Citizens take regular samples from our creeks, rivers, and bays. The samples are analyzed, cataloged, and used to inform the public, scientists, and leaders about the health of our watersheds. The Management Conference is always engaging with anyone who values coastal Alabama, and with community buy-in, managing these resources becomes that much easier now and for years to come. Do you think that economic growth has an impact on the environment? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 Economic, definitely. It would have to be. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, right? Yeah. yeah. There's no way that it doesn't. With monitoring, we use data to determine the conditions of the past. With modeling, we can use that data to make informed decisions that will impact the future. As Coastal Alabama grows, the management conference is working to apply hydrologic modeling to development. Using this modeling, we can take our collected data and use it to ensure that, as our region grows, it does so with a smaller footprint on our coastal environment. These are just some of the ways the Management Conference is using science to help us protect and maintain the coastal region we love. The nature of the science of restoration of natural environments is a difficult science. I mean, you're trying to recreate Mother Nature and we don't even understand all the elements that go into Mother Nature. And you can't just make it look like a wetland. It's got to work like a wetland or a beach or whatever. Kind of the proof of the pudding too in, to, in seeing how the studies they have funded, bringing different entities together to look at them identification of issues and problems, and seeing that many of the solutions have worked. Over the decades, erosion, development, and storms have changed the map of coastal Alabama. Improving and protecting these ecosystems is core to protecting the quality of life people value most about living here. In the coming year, the Management Conference will begin work on Pine Run in the Doe Leaf Creek watershed. This project is the finale of more than a decade of work in Doe Leaf. The project has become a model for responsible environmental management efforts and has helped the Management Conference understand how to best manage water quality and environmental conditions. The Management Conference has taken the lessons learned from the application of green infrastructure like what was done in the Doe Leaf Creek watershed and are applying them across Mobile and Baldwin counties. 20 minutes from the, the Mobile Causeway, and look off to the east, and you see nothing but marsh and trees. It's just like it would look if you were a thousand miles into the marsh somewhere in the wilderness. It's tough to put a value on how much it's worth in dollars and cents to come out here and take your son to catch his first redfish. I get emotional about it because it's something that you can't do, and this is home, and that means something. Only a sick bird fouls its nest. This is our nest, and we're not meaning to foul it, but if we don't take care of it, set it aside and protect it, it will be foul piecemeal. Love to fish. My father was a big fisherman and hunter, and so I've grown up in the outdoors all my life. Well, we were trying to give back to conservation uh, efforts that would make the resource continue to be available. And I think there was great progress. You can take a look anywhere you like from Ducks Unlimited to Gulf Coast Conservation and beyond. And I think that one of the things that has happened since we made that film, however many years ago it was, was that so many different conservation organizations came together to try to protect the resource. So what I'm most proud of is 
our collective ability to build relationships that have that have persisted across that continuum of almost 20 years. It's, that's almost a generation of work going into protecting our coastal way of life. It's the water and it's these coastal habitats and it's this coastal way of life that has connected us all. The fact that almost 300 people come together on a quarterly basis in a committee meeting format to talk about to strategize how we can do a better job of protecting our coastal way of life. That's really phenomenal. We're facing variables that we can't control. There's a lot going on in this world right now with sea level rise and climate change and hotter summers and colder winters. We don't know what's coming before us, but we now have a really solid track record of working together when the going gets tough and a great track record through the watershed management plans, through the comprehensive plan, and being able to come to the table, roll up our sleeves, and do the hard work that has to happen. Mm -hmm.